Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. I just asked people a couple of seconds ago to post their favorite free software, whether it's freeware, open source, donationware, abandonware, postcardware, whateverware, so long as it is absolutely free. Free of cost, at least monetary cost, financial cost. And of course, I'm sure you will now be posting your favorite free software in the comment thread. Maybe even leaving a video response demonstrating your favorite free software for any operating system. Of course, if you're, if you're using Linux, well, pretty much everything you have is, is free. I got a top five list uh, for finding free software, ways to do it. And this is from Chris Gilmore. Uh, member of our community at live.perillo.com says, Hey Chris, in response to your previous video of five tips to buying software, you mentioned the finding of free alternatives. This inspired me to create a top five list for finding these free alternatives. Also, as an additional side note, I'm a 14, up and coming 15 year old kid from England, so unfortunately I can't go spending 500 pounds on the latest version of Photoshop every year, resulting in the fact that these tips are very near and dear to my heart, as it were. In no particular order, here they are. Number five, Google is a geek's best friend. We use Google to find everything in our geek-tastic lives, so it makes sense to use it for finding free software. However, this must be used with extreme caution. Googling, quote unquote, free Photoshop, may not lead to open source or freeware, but to torrents, where you may certainly get a free version of Photoshop, just not legally or possibly with a payload a virus or spyware or possibly even worse if there is such a thing. Refining your search to something like free Photoshop alternatives may help you a great deal. Number four, indexing sites such as MacUpdate.com or is that we've been working on uh, beefing up download.lockernome.com for some of you. Uh, this uh, person Another Chris happens to be on a Mac, so he doesn't know anything that might be more Windows specific, are also good options for allowing you to search inside of all the applications available as open source or freeware. Uh, off the top of my head, uh, the one resource, Snap Files, it used to be known as Web Attack, I've mentioned them before. This, again, should be used with extreme caution. Only download from trusted and reputable names, as not doing so may lead to malware installed on your PC. This is bad. It's also why I tend to stay away from websites not run by the community but by corporations. Uh, you got to be really, really careful. Um, you think you trust these sites that are out there, like the big ones? Not all of them are trustworthy. Only trust one that has editorial hands on. Otherwise, not worth messing with. Trust me on this. Number three, there are also many websites whose sole purpose it is to find good software to recommend to their readers, as well as tips and other bits of content. Such sites like lifehacker.com or 43folders.com, which are particularly good for productivity tools, but also recommend other software. While not everything on here is free, I have found many good pieces of freeware here. Number two, new social media, podcasting, or whatever in the world you want to call it. Whilst these may not be the best option if you're specifically looking for a bit of software, they are great for just picking up bits and advice and tips along the way. And most importantly, providing entertainment, which in a geek's world is essential with all the malware and annoyances we have in the Vistaful world. I think he just coined a new word. Um, just as a, a kind of a, an addendum to that, I have found a lot of software just by asking all my Twitter followers. I mean, I'm on MySpace, I'm on uh, Facebook, I'm on all the big social networks, but no social network has worked better for me in terms of communicating with my audience uh, than Twitter. I'll ask, hey, does anybody know, and you gotta ask it in like 140 characters or less, you can't go on and on. Does anybody know of something that does this for that? And typically, you can get a pretty good response depending on your audience size or people who are following you. Um, you know, it may be a direct response, it may be a public response, but I have turned to crowdsourcing a lot of my questions. You know, I could go to Google, but you're not really getting personal opinions from people who are following you on Google. You are on Twitter, so I'll say, hey, does anybody know of X? And people will return, yes, I do, and this is what you need. So that's all, it's a very good note, but I will tell you that Twitter has always worked the best for me. Number one, communities. Real people are your best option. 
Having a real experience with the application, they will know what they think is best, allowing you to bypass the downloading, installing, using, and not liking and uninstalling of the countless apps you may need to try in order to find the best one. Such communities like live.perillo.com, as he mentions, do amazingly well for this kind of thing with extremely friendly and well-educated people. They are sure to hook you up with a few sites for the software you need. Granted, uh, if you come to our chat room, be prepared to face uh, just a, a, well, a, a boatload of opinions. Because if I sat here and said, I don't think GIMP is a good Photoshop replacement, it's just, it's not. Um, I just don't think most people can use it. I mean, it's okay, and I'm not saying Photoshop can be used by a, a majority of people, um, but um, I like uh, actually Picasa on both Windows and Linux. Picasa, I think, does everything someone might want to do with their photos, and it's just easy. It's so simple, and they're going to be porting Picasa to Mac OS X later this year. On Mac OS X, I recently purchased Aperture 2.0, and I love it. Oh, it is so awesome. Maybe not perfect, uh, and I know it. You know, you know, it, all software needs to be improved upon. It's that's the nature of software. It's never going to be perfect, but it just gives you something to look forward to. So, uh, you know, I'm sure people have got different opinions on photo editing software um, and free software to do it. I, I think the bottom line is be careful where you get this stuff. Always check with your friends, like your true friends. Check back with communities. Uh, check with your social network. They may know of something that's better. Uh, don't buy software without talking to people first. Well, because they may even have a coupon. When we posted the Nod32 antivirus coupons the other day, I know of at least 10 people who saved money just by using the coupon that I posted to my blog at chris.perillo.com. VNC, another example. I've been using VNC everywhere it's how i keep all my machines connected on my home network because it's just it's just easy and it's open source that's it's nice i like open source i like open source i like free i do like paying for software as well when it's you know worth paying for and there's certainly software worth paying for so if you haven't already go ahead post your favorite freeware your favorite open source programs the favorite cost free at least financial cost free programs that you know of for any operating system and yeah I know Linux is a given but more importantly what I'm hoping to do with this video uh, if you have a screencasting tool whether it was free or you paid for it just leave a video follow-up response and you know just demonstrate your favorite free program say here's what I like and here's why I like it just be interested in taking a look chances are I may have already heard about it I really like learning about the the not obscure free programs that are out there but the ones that I never heard about, but I was like, how did I live without this? I mean, this is just too cool. Anyway, my email address is chris at perillo.com. And uh, the community, as was mentioned before in this top five list submitted by Chris, uh, is, uh, is here waiting to help. In many cases, we're wel welcoming you in with open virtual arms. Timber, his arms wide. Shaka, when the walls fell. Darmok and Jalad at Tanagra. And if that made absolutely no sense to you, you're probably not a geek. And even if you are a geek, well, then you need to look up that reference so that you can be even more of a geek. Even though we attract both geeks and non-geeks in our chat room, it is full of tech heads talking hardware, software, internet, tips, tricks. You never really know what's going to happen. But I can tell you, we're waiting for you. So what are you waiting for? Stop by live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.